three already of this uh, C141 build. When I left you last time, we had the uh, fuselage left like this. And to be honest, that was only about an hour ago, so it's still drying. Um, I've just done the review of the uh, Infini sanders from Premium Hobbies. So you've probably seen that one by now. And I'm going to be using those sanders solely on this, unless I need a skinny stick. So this model will be the test for those sanders, so we'll see how we go. Um, right, so let's get on with the build. I'm not going to bother with doing the undercarriage yet. I've also noticed something else which is a bit strange um, and if you're getting this kit and there's a choice of a couple in the shop you might want to have a look inside the bags and see. If you look at these main legs, I'm going to have to stand up and get this to focus, these main wheels sorry not main legs, if you look at them you can see the hub detail on the inside is quite nice, the rim detail is very very shallow so that's going to um, require some masking because there's no edge to pick up on with a brush or anything. But then there's four of these sprues, uh, where's the fourth one, here it is, and you will see on here the right hand wheel is kind of deformed, the inner face of the wheel is, is, sh is shrunk, and if you look at this one you can see it's even worse, you can see when you look at it side on, the actual, come on camera focus, The actual inner wheel is shrunk so something worth looking out for if you've got a choice of a couple of kits have a look in the box and see if it's like that um, so I'm not going to bother building any of that up yet I'm not going to bother building up the doors yet because we basically we don't need to I'm going to get on and get the tail planes and the wings together um, so this will be again for beginners for uh, newer modelers some information for you so again using my nice little side cutters um, I'm going to take these parts off the sprue and these are the tail planes. So this is uh, this is number six, and this is number nine. So I was going to say that you can't tell which is which, but it doesn't really matter because you're using them both on the same assembly. So we'll get those off, and we'll also get these off. There we go. And same there. Right, and you'll probably notice that I'm not bothering cleaning up the sprue nibs because when we go along that, that leading edge, we're going to sand that anyway to get rid of the, uh, the glue joint. So these are going to go together something like that. Now there's a problem here. They don't want to go together. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is remove this pin. In fact, I'll remove both of them. Do the same on here. And then I'm going to get my brand new sanders out of their pack. Now these, I'm going to use the harder ones for this. So I want the, the 400 grit. Get it to come out. There we go. And these are the, as I say, these are the ultra precision soft standing stick full set. This is like a starter set. You can buy them all individually. Um, as I said in my review, so this is a brand new stick, 400 grit, and I'm just lightly going over here. And I must have, I don't know, I can't put it into words, but, but I'm not just saying this because I got these for free, but they kind of feel very nice to use. They're, they're a lovely size to hold in your hand. They've got a very sharp edge on them, and they kind I, I don't know, they kind of... They just kind of feel smooth. It's a bit like um, running your car on premium unleaded versus standard unleaded. It just seems to be a little bit faster, a little bit smoother, a bit more efficient. I can't put it into words. I won't even bother trying. So I'm just going to quickly run over these just to make sure those ejector pin marks aren't causing any issues. And I am going to remove that sprue nib from there. There we go. There's something else that's nice about these sanders I've noticed. I mean, I don't know how long it'll last, but they've got a very sharp edge. You can get right into the corners, look. So that's really nice. And then wipe on the jeans and it's cleaned out. Just like that. So there we go. So yeah, on the whole, I'm impressed.
And I must say, I can't compare them to anything else because I've never used anything other than like your supermarket type, your pound shop, you know, drugstore sanding sticks for uh, nails. Um, and the florally sanding sticks, I've never used anything other. So, but that's a lovely flat fit there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the contactor glue here and I'm going to put some along this back edge. Now we need to be careful that we don't put too much on. Okay, because what you don't want it to do is ooze up out of the joint between the elevator and the lower wing section. So you don't want any glue oozing out of that joint. You want to leave that as what looks like a proper join line. And then I'm going to take my extra thin and this is a technique I learnt off of Phil Flory. I'm going to use upside down, upside down with the tailplane and then along the edge of the brush and that saves you the risk then of having the glue run over the um, run over the edge so you've just got the glue to capillary into the join there and you haven't got the risk of the glue going over into those seam lines or anything those panel lines we've got a lovely panel line match up there so that's better than the fuselage so that's that one glued together let's do the same again on this one so we'll put some glue along here So that'll be enough to hold that together. And as you see, I, I, I forgot to mention it. You saw that when I started this, I did a test fit and um, a dry fit and found that those pins were out of position. So just go around that edge there. And then I'm going to put the drop in there a drop over there and a drop in there there we go so now that's all together and that's nice so that's the tail planes done now let's have a look at these wings they're still on the sprue so we can fortunately the back corners of those wings have got damaged the trailing edges should i say not the back corners So we're just removing the lower wing halves here. That's screw can go away. <clears throat> and then we'll remove the upper wing halves. Got some flash there getting in the way. Let's just break that off. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do now is a little uh, technique I want to show you that I used on the fuselage halves. I'm going to take a marker pen and I'm just going to do a few gentle strokes like this on each one. Right, so that's them all done now. And now I'm going to take this, um, again, this Infi uh, 400 stick and without putting any pressure on, once again, I'm going to remove this location pin because it's basically going to get in the way. And without putting any pressure on, I'm just going around and sanding until the lines on the edges disappear. Now, something I often do, I do this on the trailing edges and sand out until the trailing edges become very thin. But on this kit, the trailing edges are already beautifully thin, so thin that they get damaged and the, the uh, corners have been uh, damaged. So <clears throat> again, there's another pin there I'm going to remove. Quite often with stuff like wings and drop tanks and stuff like that, quite often the uh, location pins they give you actually force the parts to go together out of line. So it's better just remove them and do it, do it your own way. Now you can see here what's happening. I'll put some magic marker on here just to show you what's happening. And this is why I do this. 
as soon as I start sanding you'll see that the first area to get removed is here so basically this here goes up like that exaggerated it comes along and it goes up so when we put the wing halves together that may well get in the way now I'm looking at the upper wing half and it'll probably be okay because it's only on the back edge there so I don't need to fuss about that too much but it's better to try and get it as flat as you can because what you, what you want your trailing edge to come together and be an absolutely perfect join you don't want this happening and uh, that's that's always a nightmare because what you do is you fill it and you end up with a really thick trailing edge so you try and sand it and then you sand through the plastic into the filler so you don't really want to be having to sand your trailing edges or, or really mess around with the trailing edges at all once you've uh, got them all glued together and uh, <clears throat> yeah, as commented in part one I know this is a bit drawn out um, and it's drawn out for a reason it's so that the beginners the newer guys can learn about the hobby which is what I'm all about with this with this build should I say now I just want to check something here those engine mounts are higher than the actual center line the actual uh, join line so I just want to make sure they're not going to hold it apart and they're not so they can actually yes it is hold, it's holding it apart there is a gap there so I do need to actually sand them out and again I'm not putting any pressure on here at all just using the using the sanding stick let it do all the work sanding it flat <clears throat> now you'll see some people do this kind of thing I don't like doing that because what you'll often find is the paper will curl up on the edges and it will take it'll give you a, a, a convex shape whereas if you just stroke a flat stick over it it can't be anything other than flat the other thing you must be careful of is you don't hold the part too firmly and distort it just hold it lightly in your hand and let the let it lay out once to lay don't try and um, flatten it out now what I'm going to do here I'm going to take my curved blade we can see we've got a lump there I'm going to scrape that lump away like so and there we go so I'll go and get the rest of these wings sanded as I've just shown you and then uh, I'll come back when we're ready to glue them together. Right they're all sanded now and we're ready to go. Um, of note, a couple of points, um, the engine mounting here was actually sitting above the actual join line so I've cut it away and it's left giving me a hole. Don't worry about that the engine will go in there fine but um, be wary of that that would actually hold your wing halves apart so I've had to cut quite a little chunk of plastic off the front there whether that's just in my version in my kit because of a bit of core shift in the mold I don't know but something worth looking at and unfortunately all these corners have all got damaged because of the dire packaging where it's all just thrown in a bag so uh, that's unfortunate that's all that gonna have to be uh, rebuilt and repaired we've got a sink mark there as well so I can show you how to deal with that um, so now we need to get these wings together uh, be careful not to break that off as well and the other thing I had was on the on my kit on both upper wing halves there were lumps of plastic here which will affect the join onto the fuselage so you can just carve them away and uh, make sure you stay away from the edge the other thing we're going to have to deal with is the actual wing fit now I've, I've noticed on another build online uh, the guy was struggling with the um, the fit here he had a terrible fit um, and ended up having to use lots of filler and sanding and everything so basically uh, what I'm going to do is open up this slot or I'm going to reduce the thickness of this to allow the wing to sit lower because it's actually raised up here I'm not sure about the other one what that's like oh that one's a lot better it still needs to come up down a touch but it's a lot better so yeah so I'll be doing that um, after the wings are together so um right we're going to get these wings together then so first thing I do is deal with the trailing edge and once again I'm going to go back to my thick cement with our contactor and go around all these areas 
where we've got a thin trailing edge just get we got to be quite quick because otherwise it will dry out that's why it looks like I'm putting too much on if I put a touch on it will dry before I get a chance to uh, get the upper wing anywhere near it so we just do that and then just bring them together like so and then make sure the, the edges of the the mounting face is flush that's I guess that's your most important part getting that wrong now will give you a headache later on make sure your leading edge is all flush make sure your trailing edge is nice and tidy got some damage there look so we'll just push that up in I've got some glue on my finger there and I've rubbed it onto the surface so I'll show you how to deal with that and there we go just squeezing the trailing edges squeezing everything and making sure it all goes together nicely close the glue first tip close that glue and then I'm just going to brush some extra thin into these joints and again I'm going to use the Phil Flory upside down method to get some glue. Another tip I can give you, something I do, you can squeeze the wing, open up the join and then put some glue in there and when you close it up you'll see it start to ooze out and that will give you something to sand once it's gone hard. Okay, just to show you that again squeeze the wing the joint opens up you can use the tip of the brush to get the glue in there and then when you let it go it'll lose out same as doing the fuselage it's a bit like um mig welding you, you always get a neater job if you weld into a gap and the if you think of the the parent metal in the mig wire going into the joint it's penetrating all the way through same as this is doing penetrating all the way through rather than just sitting on the surface and there we go so that is one wing all glued up now that area where I got some glue where was that that was here so I can use my fingernail just to scrape in where that seam line is and then I can use a this is a 1000 hard stick just lightly sand over the area using no pressure and then the glue mark is gone okay so that's that we're all glued together all good to go and then we can come along afterwards remove all these sprue nibs at the same time as cleaning up the the leading edge I'm going to put some more glue in there okay so that's that then so I'll get the other wing glued up and then I'll come back okay now the wings are together and you can see we've got the tail planes slotted in as well so we can see the size of this thing and it's not a small plane at all it's not much smaller than something like a 70 second scale Victor actually so um there we go that's that now what I want to look at now is these the fit of these wings before the, the, I'm letting the glue go off and then we'll deal with the seams and everything um, this wing I doubt you can see it but it's sat high so we've got a step now rather than have to try and deal with that afterwards I've also just read the a comment thank you um, from one of my followers and he's basically told me that area there should be flat so at the moment we can see if I get a rule you can see it's not flat at all it's actually concave so we're gonna have to I don't know I may even put a piece of plastic cut this cut this out and put a piece of plastic card in or I just sand it flat and then put a piece of plastic card in we'll see um, but uh, rather than just have loads of filler in there so that's the reason for that so um, there we go so I need to make sure now this wing goes down um, in fact if I'm going to put plastic card in the middle maybe I don't need to make sure it goes down let's make it go down anyway so what I'm going to do is using my pointed blade I'm going to shave some plastic off of the bottom of this slot just taking little bits out like this there we go and then do the same going backwards
that now the wing should sit lower down and it does so I need to pack out the back a bit I've got taken a bit too much out of the trailing edge remove a little bit more from the leading edge I wonder if that sander will fit in that way I know what sander will fit in as one of these sanders like I get from the supermarket these are great I don't think any model company makes these they're very thin and very hard and they're very good if you want if you want to sand something flat and not round the corners off so we just remove a bit more material from there and there we go that's sitting lovely now so I'm going to pack the back up slightly with some plastic card now this side is a lot better Oh, it's still got a bit of a step there so what I'm going to do here is literally come in with this blade with it straight and scrape just scrape some plastic away like so um, which one do I want that one isn't it um, there we go that's a much better fit now although it's slightly no it's not it's it's fine slightly slightly high on the leading edge so I'm just gonna take a bit more off of the the front than the back there we go. and this is all about what I'm talking about with dry fitting and test fitting and making sure that everything is is right before you even attempt to put any glue on it so that's going to need packing up now I'm going to put some plastic card in these slots anyway to tighten up the fit because you can see they're like a I was going to say a prick in a top hat but I didn't want to swear so I won't say a prick in a top hat but you know what I mean so um there we go so I'll get some plastic card in there and we'll go from there right then I've been uh, playing now with some plastic card and had some ideas and stuff so you can see now the wings are on and they look a lot better they're also a much tighter fit and I've now got this step just so you can see going the other way so that the the fuselage is now higher than the wing and that will enable me to sand the fuselage flat because I've had a comment from Robin Thompson thank you Robin who's uh, worked on these for many years apparently and he's told me this area here should be flat whereas on the kit it's actually concave so what I've done you can see I've added plastic card here and there and in there and done the same on this side and what I've done I've using this um, the trumpeter saw I've just gone in and cut a slit in the actual wing box front and back like so okay and then pack this out with plastic card and then as this goes in what it will do it pushes the center of the wing box up to enable me to sand it flat so I should be able to get the correct form on here with little or no filler at all and um, what I don't want to do is have a great big thick wedge because you can see here if you look there you can see how much of a one of the sort of shape we're looking at here I can get the camera to focus there you go and you have filler all the way down there so if I can sand this flat I don't want to have any filler there at all um, just to give you an idea what I can do is put this in now I've also got to be mindful of keeping the the lower edge correct as well that's why you'll see bits of plastic card and you can see a stress mark there where I've actually moved the plastic up and it's just a case then if, if we do the um, magic marker trick again what you'll see is when I start sanding like so all it does is removes plastic from the outside edges so in the end once you finish sanding you'll end up with a flat surface that's the plan so we'll see how that comes together but I'll leave that until the wings are actually glued on um, and then I can sand them to, to blend the wings and also deal with that wing joint as well I've also noticed we've got a bit of a problem the the, um, the cord which is the length of the wing root is on the, longer on the wing than it is on the fuselage so you end up with it overhanging at the back so I don't know what I'm going to quite do there I think I may sand the leading edge fill the rear I, I don't know um, but it's uh, it, it certainly looks a little bit odd so um, we'll see what we do when we get there but um 
chub is under here we've got to think about we've got these little air scoops in here they're probably for the air conditioners or something so um yeah we need to not sand them away we've also got some detail there we don't want to lose mm -hmm. and we've got detail on the fuselage we don't want to lose also so um yeah it's going to be a little bit tricky this but i'm sure we'll get there and uh and i'll show you how we'll take you through all the way so um i've just got to leave all this now to dry so that basically is uh is that okay so it's sunday morning now and uh we've um going to start sanding out these joints and everything on the wings and fuselage and that and we're going to use our new infinity uh ultra precision series sanders so i've got here the 400 and the 600 and i've got here the 600 and 1000 sponges now i've done this wing here i thought i'd just try them out first and make sure i know what i'm going to say um and they are i love them uh, admittedly they're brand new uh, i haven't um worn them out but this this one is is is, is so hard you you can you can see all these sprue nibs along this leading edge what I can do is just come along with this 400 grit and just basically go around the leading edge and just keep following it around and it will take off those sprue nibs without reducing any anything else because it's so uh, because it's very hard so obviously again I'm not pushing I'm just letting the sander stick do the work so you can see we've got rid of most of the seam and most of the sprue nibs I can run my finger along there and I can't really feel much at all. Just do the same on the lower side. Just some of the sprue nibs are bigger than others, so I need a little bit more work. There's a little ridge there, we need to be careful not to remove that. So there we go. So that's that's the 400 grit. Now I can still feel something there, so we'll just keep going. You can see a little white edge there, that's a little undercut, so I'll have to put some filler in there. And then I'm going to use the 600. Oh, I need to do the, uh, the tip as well. We've got the um, screw nib on there, which needs to go. There we go. And then I'm going to take the 600 sponge and these things are lovely, really, really soft. And I can go in there and it's not going to put any flat spots on anything. I just go along the leading edge like this. And we can see we've got some areas here that are going to need a bit of work. And just sand along that end of that leading edge. Doesn't matter if we remove a bit of meat from there because if you remember the wing cord is too long anyway. Now on the trailing edge we've got some sort of edges there so I'm going to take my 400 and just on an angle like that keep it straight and just literally just sand over like that just to literally take off any any edges or anything and I'm going to get my 600 and just go along and make sure we've got the, uh, the trailing edge nice and straight. In fact we need to remove a bit of material from there because we've got a bit of a bulge. And there we go. Now, where these wing tips have been damaged, I'm going to have to do some remedial work there, but I'll probably wait until the uh, the wings are all fitted to do that. We'll see. And then I just want to get this, um, where's my 400? Just want to get this area in here sanded out nice and flat. And we can see on there we've got some faulty moulding. So we'll just cut that away. And then get in there so this is actually now this is the part of the build where i'm actually testing these sanded sticks out and i can tell you i love them yes they're new so i can't tell you about their lifespan yet but i can tell you that i love them right so that wing fits on there nicely now this one should fit the same i haven't done the inner side on this one the mounting face just give that a sand then push this in nice and tight and then that lifts up that uh, that center section there 
Okay, so that's that done. So now we've got the uh, wings all done. I'll take the thousand grit sponge and I'm just going to run over all the edges just to make sure we haven't got any marks left from the 400 or the 600 grit. And you can see there, I mean, on this wing, the other one's not so good, but this wing, that leading edge is, is gorgeous. So we'll have to go and put our panel lines back in on that one. There we go. And I'll just show you close up what we're, the sort of finish we're looking at here. If I get the camera to focus. More camera focus. There we go. You can see that the the finish on that leading edge is gorgeous. So yeah, these um these these sponges are very soft, and um I don't know. I, I can't explain. Like I said earlier, I can't explain. They just feel really really nice. So have a quick look at the fuselage now. We'll look at these seams underneath, and I won't bore you with um too much of this. So I'm going to take this 400 grit and just literally go over it and just remove any of that oozed out glue or anything. Remove any step that's present. And you can see there it's uh, coming out lovely. And I'm going to have to add some bits of sprue or something to replace those lightning things. So here we go. And uh, today, yes, I say today, Sunday, the 22nd of September, 2019, and we're 11 away from 5,000 subs, guys. So uh, really, really chuffed really really uh, made up that so many people have joined in and I'm quite surprised how much interest this uh, this model has brought I wouldn't have thought it would have been so so um, interesting but I guess the, the nice big models are all well and good and people would love to watch and see the builds and see the reviews and everything but I guess not everybody's got the room to store them or the money to spend on those bigger kits, you know, something like this, this was like £25, you know, it's, um, it's a lot of fun for 25 quid. I must be honest. So we go, just using this sponge now, going around the, around the fuselage like that, and we can see that we've got a little bit of a step there. So I'm going to have to use some uh, Mr. Servicer on here, which you knew I would anyway, because I have Mr. Servicer on the cornflakes if I had the choice. Now I'm going to use this sanding stick this way round to get straight along this joint. I'm just going to give it a clean off on my jeans. And as I say, if you want to avoid these things clogging up, you can use them wet. But the beauty is, if they are waterproof, you could probably wash them. And I will try that. If it gets all clogged up and um, you know won't clear out, then I'm going to try washing them in some soapy water to see what happens. If they fall apart, they fall apart, but uh, it's better that they fall apart on me than fall apart on you because I got these for free thanks to Edit Premium Hobbies. There we go. That is the correct way to sand a radius, guys. Not like that. That is the correct way. Like that. Come back with the 600, just go over like that and you can see that the, and then I'm going to go in the opposite direction, with the 1000, like so, so that's that pretty much disappeared. Let's get something, let's get a 2500 out. This 
is the 2500 Infini sponge. We can see that seam has all but disappeared. We've got a bit of a line there, which means it may need some more glue in it. You see this white line here, guys? That's usually an indication that you uh, don't have enough glue in that area. Okay, so what I generally do with that is just run a scriber down and then put some more glue in it. Or just run a knife blade down it or something, but I'm not going to do anything right now. Now, so we've done the 2500, so let's go to the 4000. And we can see straight away there, guys, that it's polishing up beautifully. And we can see the seam there, and we can see because it's glossy, try and get this in the light for you because it's glossy we can see if we need to do any more work on that area like we can see we've got a bump there there was a sprue nib so uh yeah very very impressed so i'm gonna get rid of that bump with the 600 just sand it there and we can see there because we're sanding away over the gloss and it's turning the areas we touch dull we can see where we've got high and low spots so um saves us using guide coats and stuff hey go and then come back with the 2500 and that's the thousand just come back there level all that out then the 4000 polish that up again and we can see now that we've got pretty much no seam I say pretty much, there's a bit of a step there, I can see. I'm using the 400 stick again, the hard stick. These are called the Matadors. And I'm going to go over with the 2500. Again, no pressure, just letting it do the work. And then 4000. And there we are we can see that seam is now invisible okay so once that's had a cut of primer and we've scribed all the lines and everything you'll never know it was there so i'm going to go on and get the rest of this done i'm also thinking i'm going to paint the cockpit again because uh, i've had the, a couple of messages and it looks like i have got the wrong sort of colors in there i don't know we'll see so um i've also got to do this top area here and for that i'm going to use my nice hard 400 grit and just literally sand over the top until it's all flat and then making sure that i stay even now as i say we can use magic marker as a guide coat as a, as a guide so we can see where we're sanding <clears throat> so i'm just going to sand over the top like this and i need to make sure that I stay even. I don't want to start sanding more off of this side than that side. So <clears throat> just stay on it like this. And if my voice sounds a bit funny, I've just um, I've just made a stew. It's gone in the slow cooker, and uh, <laughs> the the onion was particularly strong, and uh, it's um, teared me up and sort of <laughs> given me like I've got a bit of a cold. So uh, sorry about that. So there we go and we'll try the wings in there and then we'll just keep try testing them until we get that nice and flush and we will, the basically objective is to get a flush joint on either side here and to get the top of the uh, wing box here flat so that's my basic plan there okay we've also got to do some work on this seam on this flange to get a better join in there there's obviously something stopping it going in fully. So I'm just a bit of a scrape down there. The other thing I often do with wings is get one of these round edge blades and scrape the middle out. So you're kind of forming a concave face. 
and anything that's there then that's going to cause you issues it's usually been scraped away there we go I think that's a bit better so um there we go guys now what I could do now is just put some masking tape on the wings to protect them and sand away I could just sand away as it is but I don't want to be removing any detail off those off those wing surfaces because it just means I have to scribe it all back in again. But the wings have got some anhedral, so they're kind of away from the sanding stick, as you can see. But certainly adding that plastic card to these tabs and in there has tightened everything up. If you remember before, it was all really, really sloppy. Now it all fits nice and strong. So um, I'm going to go on sanding these fuselage joints. And then I'll come back when that's done um, so there we go right I'll see you in a minute okay there we go I'm happy with that um, all the preliminary sanding is done a preliminary <laughs> try saying that after a few beers um, so that's a pre preliminary sanding is done and I'm happy that all the the seams are now ready to get a coat of Mr. Surfacer or, or whatever and um, got this wing box sort of flattened out now we have to put something in the middle here um, I must confess these sticks are brilliant but I have had to get out my floory skinny stick to get into here in this area so that's the only restriction with these you're not going to get in tight places where your skinny sticks will um, I'm also finding like for this, this one I've caught it on something and the edge is, is torn so maybe not you know that hard wearing but I don't think any any stick you you buy will be um and the other thing I've thought of that they're, they're a lot of people talk about floral sanding sticks they don't have grits marked on them and that's something they don't like but what is good about the floral sanding sticks you can see here that they're all where's the different ones they're all color coded okay so this is the selection of skinny sticks so this is one of their soft sponges so this is the white which is the really coarse this is the blue which is the next one down and then you've got the finest one which is the green so as they get worn out you know you're, you're on your bench you only need to find one there it is the green as these get worn out and this disappears I mean if it does you're not going to know which is which so you're going to be forever sort of picking them up and which is which which is the smoothest and um you know you may make some mistakes that saying that if this doesn't wear off then I would rather use this system than the colors so you know you pay your money you take your choice I think but uh certainly I absolutely love these things they're really really good um, if these numbers don't wear off and they say the grits don't fall out I can imagine the only thing that's going to ruin these is tearing them or having them all clogged up so if you do get yourself a set of these I would recommend um, getting all your old sanding sticks out and using them for initially shaping your fillers and stuff because it would be a shame to clog these up with filler um, because they're so nice for using on the on the plastic you can see here I mean I've, I've the uh, refueling area I've polished that something I have noticed which is extremely disappointing if I'm honest um, with this kit look at that you've got this fairing here that goes over the wing box and look at the difference in sides look for Christ's sake guys these two fuselage halves are on the same sprue surely I mean this is ridiculous no wonder I was having an issue I couldn't seem to get this step out I could get out here I could get out here but I see it still had this step here and you can see this massive step it's because it's running down at a sharper angle so come on that's ridiculous <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do some remedial work there I don't know what I'm gonna do I'll probably extend this one rather than try and sand that one back but uh, maybe a bit of both so yeah well done Rodan nice um, so there we go so that's that for um, for part three um, basically part three has been all about you know getting the wings together and sanding out the joints and everything and um, yeah other than this really happy so far 
Um, next part, I'll have done all the um, Mr. Surfacer in the joints and rescribing all the uh, the panel lines and everything. So um, I look forward to seeing you for that one. Bye for now, guys.